Ladies and gentlemen, uh, thanks for joining me. My name is Diablo I'm here to show you how to utilize um, the runes in the new plugin that we've gotten called RuneCraft. And each of these runes um, have each of their unique purpose and has a way to utilize them. And I'll show you how you can utilize them. I'll give you a few uh, tips on how you could mix runes or how you could um, have your runes uh, in specific ways and stuff like that. The first rune, or the first two runes, is the waypoint and the teleport rune. The waypoint rune is like a kind of circle it goes like this around and then a spot in the uh, in the middle. These blocks are signature blocks and you will not be able to make a waypoint without the signature blocks. Signature blocks means that uh, depending on what signature it has is unique. So if you have for example this signature as you can see red, green, blue and yellow. This one over here being red, green, blue and yellow would teleport to that specific waypoint but this one, this has the exact same blocks as this one, but it will not teleport to that one. The reason for this is that the order of colors has been changed. It's now green, red, blue, and yellow. Therefore, this one will not teleport to that one, because it needs to be the specific order. You could do this with any kind of block, except maybe cobblestone but apart from that you could do it with almost every kind of block uh, colored wool is probably easiest because there are so many uh, what could you say so many different ones so it's pretty easy to find there uh, another one is that you would always have to remember which one is north right now I cannot see for myself which one is north uh, but if I were to have one here and one far away in my house, it would be pretty hard to see which way is actually north. There is a compass room for this. Very simple, requires five pieces of cobblestone. You build it like this, like a cross, and then you use it in the middle. It shows you the way to north by making like an arrow, which means the north is that way. This means that if I would have a, a waypoint that looks like this, I wouldn't be able to put my red wool down there and then follow the line like that. I would have to have the red wool point in the same direction. Therefore, it's good to always know which location the red wool is, or which direction the, the, the red wool is going. So, how does this work? Well, when you've made your waypoint, given the signature, you right click the middle, waypoint accepted, a new opening can be create, has been created in the fabric of the ether the waypoint signature is no longer needed here. What the waypoint signature is no longer needed here means is that you can now remove the signature. The reason why this is useful is because if someone else finds your waypoint they could just make a teleporter to it and then they'd have your signature. So you can remove your signature and it'd be, it'd be, it's, it's, it still uh, would be saved and uh, you could still teleport to it and I think we should uh, test that. This is the teleporter I've made to it. It's currently not accepted or currently not working. Uh, as it, as you can see, it still has the signatures in it. So we right click. It should say teleporter accepted. A tunnel through the ether has been established. Now, now the uh, the two teleporters has been made. And if I am to make a teleporter here, it will say such a destination has not been opened. Although, as we know, it has been opened. But this is because the direct or the um. The so the color is uh, completely different from what this one were. So we can try using it. The way you use it is just right click. The way you use most runes is through right click, and there are very few exceptions. So, and I'm now over here. As you can see, this rune, this teleporter, would teleport me to this waypoint. The way I look down into the waypoint also depends how I'm teleported to, or the way I look down into the teleporter also depends on how I'm teleported to the waypoint. If I am to look this way, I would be teleported looking this way. If I am to look the opposite way, as in this way, I would be teleported here. Let's make it sunny. But there is also a way to utilize it, because that looks extremely awful. And if someone were to walk around and see, oh, 
well here's a waypoint they could just destroy the middle block and then the waypoint wouldn't work in fact let's test that that shouldn't be true so if I am to try it now the way has been barred from the other side so uh, if you do that and even if you place that back it would still not work you'd have to put in the signature block again and then make the teleport now how would you utilize this best well there's actually a way because there's actually a hidden waypoint and this teleport actually teleports me to the hidden waypoint you cannot see the the waypoint but you know it's there as you can see you can teleport you can see it's right above right beneath me and if i am to break these blocks let's just find the location again if i am to break these blocks it should reveal a hidden waypoint should look somewhat like this like that if I am to reveal that um, it would mean that um, th the waypoint is now hidden you can see the signature blocks are still in there you can break those as well uh, even though you put down um, even if you put it on the ground but you can still see that the signature blocks are there uh, you can break those though now it's hidden so you wouldn't see it I am to refill the uh, the grass upon on top of it, like that. You can you can definitely not see it anymore. It looks very nice on the ground, so it's very hard to see. And if I teleport, it still works. So that's how you can utilize the uh, the teleport waypoint um, runes. Uh, in Runecraft, there are also many other runes. It's not just about teleporting or uh, mobilization. It can also have something to do with how quickly you can mine an area. And I'll uh, I'll give an example of that. So there's something called the power pick, the power shovel, and the uh, the power axe. The power pick is, as the name suggests, um, making your pick stronger. So the way the rune works is that you need to clear your inventory, get some redstone, get some redstone torch, and get some cobblestone. Okay. So we put a redstone in the corner, a redstone torch there, redstone there, redstone torch. Like that, and then like that. This is the basis of the um, the power pig shovel or power axe. So I'm going to start with a diamond pig. So I'm going to use it and it should give me a message saying that t this type of pig will now mine in a larger area. Now if I am to butcher all these slimes and then hit here, even though I am in uh, creative, this also works in uh, survival, I can give an example of that. If I am to break, it would break all the blocks around. And again, break. Now it, it has run out of uh, things, out of power, so it cannot break the entire thing. <coughs> There's also another bot. Uh, I can make another one. Now what, what I haven't said, or talked about yet, is that if there is a... There's a O here, going like this, going inwards like that. And I am to break this. You can see it doesn't actually break the O. It doesn't actually touch the O. But if I am to break, for example, you can see if I, if I were to hit... Uh, if this was stone and I were to hit now, that would break that up there. But I am to hit that. It doesn't actually break up there. It just breaks the diamond. So if you if you use the um, the thing, the uh, power pick, it only breaks the block you are hitting. So cobblestone. If you were to uh, punch cobblestone, it would only it would only destroy cobblestone and give you cobblestone back. Uh, whereas if you were to destroy only diamond ore, it would only destroy diamond ore. And that's the same way with the power shovel which is made the exact same way but this time using a shovel instead and again you utilize it using right click this time carrying a shovel um, these are called tool runes by the way there are um, runes depending on many things so if you are to use it power shovel accepted, this type of shovel will now dig in a larger area. If I am to destroy, it would now destroy all the the dirt. 
This also works with gravel, with sand, uh, possibly clay, I am not sure. Possibly also these things, whatever th those are. So it works with everything that the shovel works good with. Now the axe is a bit different than the, um, the pick and the, the shovel. The way the axe works is that instead of destroying all uh, all the trees, it destroys just the um, the uh, yeah. It now it, it says it fells a tree. So the way it works is that you destroy here, and then it destroys all the way up. Uh, that means if you have a huge tree, like so, if you were to destroy it, it would destroy all the trees on that tree all the locks as you can see there are currently not a single lock left there are still a lot of uh, leaves left but all the locks have been destroyed and now fell uh, into your possession you can see I now have 11 uh, there might be more stuck up here somewhere yeah there are still a few pieces stuck up in the, the tree more here so it, it, it destroys all the uh, wooden logs but it doesn't destroy the um, the leaves. Now um, there's a there's another one for those who like mining called the the power drill. It's not as good as the power pick, if you ask me. I was uh, oh there you go. It's not as good as the power uh, power pick, but if you punch a if you punch a block it will dig inwards like that like a drill goes inwards and um, depending on what tier you have will uh, make it longer will destroy more blocks in blocks inwards or depending on what direction you look if I look this way it will destroy that way if I look this way it will destroy upwards um, uh, tears is something I'll uh, come in, come around in a second, but not right now. I'm, I'm just going to show all the runes, and then I'm going to show a bit more about the tears. Uh, now there are a lot of runes for elites, and I'm going to keep those later. I'm going to talk more about the uh, the more open ones. Um, there's um, another one for PvP. We've uh, chosen to open this for everyone. Uh, reason for that is because we feel that if we only open it for elites. Elites get a kind of, I don't know, uh, unfair advantage in PvP. So we've chosen to keep this open for everyone. It's called pyrokin, uh, pyrokin kinase, ki pyrokinesis or whatever. I am not so good with my kinesis. Awful, uh, awful word. So you get a, we get a diamond sword. As so, you trash that in. You use it. There you go. You can now channel pyrokine pyrokinesis through this type of sword. So you can now, if you right click on something that works, it might only work on certain blocks. Oh, there we go. So you have to attack. So as you can see, it ignites the surface. And this is on any kind of distance. Uh, oh, it actually also works here. So you can. I can use it in that tree over there, that, that, all the way over there. So th it has no distance limit. Um, now, there's also another one of these that we've also chosen to uh, give to everyone, uh, which is called the Fire Sword. As much as it sounds like the same as the other one, pyroki Pyrokinesis, um, it's actually different. And I'll show you why. That was eight, a normal torch, not a redstone one. So it looks like this, and you can see um, Betex and Seol fighting against others. So we use it, and you can now set fires with this type of sword. So, unlike the other one, as you can see now, it doesn't do anything like this. But if you do like this, right click, it ignites. It doesn't have, a, like this one has a distant limit, as long as you can touch the block. As you can see in the distance, you can see like there's a uh, th there's the black square as if I can hit the block. That means that I can ignite it there, so I can set this a fire. 
So that means the fire sword is working. So it works approximately the same way, but it's a much much more simple one, and that's why it requires less material. The next one is a mobility one for uh for the usage of bow. We'll uh, see if I can create this. It's a bit hard to remember the uh, the creation of every one of them. So it requires netherrack here and there. And then it requires one bow and 64 arrows approximately. Like that. And you right click. And you just say, fire this bow to teleport to the place the arrow lands. That was a bow of translocation. The way it works is that, let's say you're caught down here, there's a wall there, and you want to go over. You can, of course, fail like me and just get up there. You can also do like this, and you should be over. Of course, stuck in the trees. Um, you can shoot as far, like, you land where the arrow lands. So if you shoot extremely far, I shot it upwards, because, uh, see, I'm going to land up here. Uh, but if you shoot it extremely far, I'm not going to, I want to go very far away, but I'm going to guess I'm going to get relatively far away now. If you shoot extremely far away, you get as far as the arrow lands, as you can see. Um, there are more bow enchantments, but only for elites, uh, no more for... Uh, non elites. I'm going to show a bit of the um, the uh, elite ones soon. Uh, after this video, I believe there should be an elite one as well. Uh, there's another one uh, because sometimes using your bow it just isn't enough. You need a bit more, and the way you get that little bit more is by becoming Spider-Man, obviously. And for that, we use the Spring Room. So it goes like this, very simple room. Like that, that's the room. Uh, I remove my diamond sword and I get a piece of string. Then use it. A uh, tree cannot go there, obviously. Let's try again. And we use it, there you go. So, I go down and I can attack and I will come up. Depending on how many times you attack, if you attack, like, depending on where, what angle you have, further you go up. So, if you go like this, you don't go very far up. Although, if you go like this, you can see I jump far up. Like that, right? So I can I can fly relatively high, but you can also mix the amount of uses by um, using it in rapid, in a rapid motion. So you can see using it rapidly will allow me to relatively levitate all the way so you can fly like this and that's really cool but there's one thing with it and I can show you if you do like this that hurts doesn't it uh, that's quite a lot of hearts and that can do quite a lot of damage well, there's obviously something against that called the fairy boots. That's a very simple rune as well. That's why I recommend everyone trying to learn these uh, simple runes in order to uh, to utilize them as well as they can. You need iron boots or better, like that, and they automatically equip, as you can see, unless you have something else. You can see it says cool feet as well, but ignore that. So now, if I am to jump off here. You can see I levitate slowly, no damage taken. If I am to fly very high, like this, you can see I levitate, but I can still kind of control my fall. It goes very slowly, but I can still control my fall. Well, in case you have a rune on something you do not want, you can dispel the item. The dispelling rune is extremely simple as well. It goes like this. Just like a, a square, just like the, the waypoint rune. Just like that. But then you do like that instead. Then you take off the item. And you right click. All magic has been cleansed from this tool. It automatically equips, so be careful. This might work as well. It's called the identifier. It identifies... Uh, 
it identifies what things you have on the item so you use it identify accepted there is uh, something called the um, runic radio which um, allow it, it's a hidden chance an ender pearl to make kind of a radio system and I'll, I'll try making it I'm not sure how well it will work it's like the party chat so I won't really suggest this um, as you already have the party chat obviously so you put that there and then you put I redstone torch one put redstone torches around the place then you put one signature block on top which we make it this so you take an ender pearl and then you right click runic radio accepted whilst holding this pearl your words will only reach on will reach only those with compatible pearls so everyone needs a pearl which has the uh which has the um the runic radio with the signature you have to so speak hold the pale to hear merely keep the pearl with you hello i say as you can see it now shows my text differently it now shows it in kind of a, a hashtag like that a uh, a pound as you can see if i were to say uh seul he wouldn't hear me hello seul uh he has not heard me and no matter what I could scream and cry, but if I am to take it off, hello, see all, he would now see me. It's now back to normal, and now it's off normal. So that's the runic radio. It works a bit like the um, the thing, but again, you just need to carry the runic radio with you in your inventory for it to work, but you don't actually need to have it equipped for it to work unless you want to. Uh, last time I used it, it was extremely unresponsive or irresponsive. Um, so I hope it's going to be friendly this time. If not, I'm just going to try to explain what it does. Whether it works on players or not, also I'm using netherrack now, and that's just because I'm, I, I don't want to give uh, cobblestone. Whether it um, works on players or not, I'm not particularly sure, but I think it does. So as you can see, if you strike, if you hit towards a monster, at some point, it should pull them towards you. As you can see, it says now 500 more uses. I can pull the pig. As you can see, it's extremely hard to uh, to land. Only you have to hit on the ground where they stand. Then apparently, it's easier makes uh, enemies fly around it's a bit like this string but as you can see it's now opposite instead of you flying around it's the enemies forcing a force to fly around Good. Uh, magic beacon is the next one pretty useless to be fair that's why I made it available for everyone uh, but you might be able to find a use for it. How? I have no idea. Again, I use netherrack completely. Uh, it doesn't matter at all. It creates a, uh, a magic beacon, depending on, uh, well, the height and the tier block. As you can see, it's very small now. Um, I can try, if I make it out of diamond blocks, it should make it uh, infinitely high. Well, of course not infinitely, because it depends on the height of the server. And the server is 256, so it should be 256 blocks high. Uh, it stops at any challenge in the, the way. So if I am to make... Let's try making another one here with diamond blocks. And then if I take diamond blocks here and then right click it would stop at the diamond block. This would be pretty useful if you were to make pillars of light so you can destroy it afterwards. So you can make pill of pillars of light this way. Um, but remember if anyone destroys just one block the entire thing disappears leaving nothing. There is one rune left I would like to show. Uh, but this one is um, creating a pet you could say 
a fellow pet. Uh, the pet is of course a chest. Right now it's uh, pretty useless. It can open its mouth, can stand still. I'm gonna guess it means that it needs to be like this, perhaps. Aha! The one will now summon your chest. Aha! Uh huh. So you have a pet now. This chest will now follow you around. Let's say, oh, I'm mining. Um, I've got 64 stone. 64 stone. Well, I need to put that in there. So. I need to bring it home so I can just place it and take out the 64 stone. Put it in a new chest I have here. Put in the 64 stone. Go down into my mine. Uh, put in this gold ore and this cobblestone I found. And then come back home and, uh, well, bring it back. Take this, put it in. So it's very useful and it only works in this stick. And as you can see, spawn it as long as it's in reach um, so it's very very useful and you broke it it doesn't come back it also works with an ender chest and you can actually rename the stick in case you have 100 sticks and you would like a specific stick to be your uh, chit chest pit name so if you are to have let's try it again like I believe it was something like this, and then gold or gold or there you go. And we have I and Bill one. Do not remember how this works. New uh, stick of stick of chest. There you go. So I now have the stick of chest, but I can still use it. So I now know that well, I have thirty two sticks here. Uh, and they of course also works, but I also have my stick of chest which uh, allows me, uh, you can engrave it, and I'm not going to speak about that because it's another elite thing um, but you can engrave it, which is very useful, and I'm going to speak about that in the elite chest so I have, see this where, so I'm going to go over here this is where I put in my things things I've gotten, go out of, survive, uh, out of uh, creative, and then I punch it Oh, where is it? Oh, you sent your chest back. So now it's back, but I can still summon it here. So now my friend can go over here, see, okay, well, you know, uh, this is what he wants me to take. I put it in a different chest. But I can still, he can then message me, maybe in the runic radio, maybe in the party chat. I'm now taking the things. Okay, well, yeah, you have. Oh, here's some, some more, you know. Uh, you can also teleport, no matter what. And then punch. It will always go back to where you summoned it, okay? So, <coughs> some people might say, oh, Diablo, Diablo, Diablo. This is all very nice. But how will it benefit us? How will we get into people who live under the ground? Sure, we can fly around and get onto people's floating island. And gee whiz, but how will we get into people's caves then? Well, it's actually pretty simple. And you'd think it wouldn't be. But it is. Here's a death node. Right? Activate it. Oh. Oh, apparently. Uh, let me just waste it here. There you go. Depth node accepted. Place the paper on the ground to measure the depth. Okay. So. Oh. Uh, the paper turns ink black. Why does it do that? There's no depth. As you can see, here's a hole. Right? You activate it. Oh! The digit 3 appears on the paper. I wonder what that means. 1, 2, 3. Oh, hole. So, what it does is it shows you exactly how many blocks are down to the nearest cave. It can be useful. Let's say this is um, this is someone's house I'm walking on top of. It. Oh, the digit 3. So, here is something. So, I can make my thing here. I'm just going to delete this. I can make my next rune here called the warp zone. Have you guys s ever played Mario and thought, oh, these things look a lot like the the tube, the pipes in Mario? Well, there's a reason for that. Warp zone accepted. See, this is where um, you jump down, jump down in the hole, and it should bring you down here. Oh, I'm probably stuck in the ground. But as you can see, 
I'm now down a level, which uh, is now inside the house, right? So as you can see, if I in, turns ink black, but I'm inside the house now. So now you can get up to people's floating islands. You can get down into people's hidden uh, ground bases. You can of course uh, teleport. You can put teleporters around, hide them. There are also other things. There are curses and hexes. I'm going to speak about those in a more specific video about curses and hexes where I'm going to talk about how you can utilize those. I'm also going to talk about elite in, in more future videos. I'm going to talk about elite um, elite runes, how you can utilize elite runes, why we've given elites these runes compared to normal players. And maybe it'll interest you in getting a lead for these runes. Maybe it won't. M who knows? So, I'm just gonna quickly talk here in the last moment. I'm just gonna quickly talk about um, some problems with the rune craft we have currently. A lot of the runes allow you to fly or to uh, destroy a lot of blocks at the same time or to fall slowly and so on and so forth. Uh, a lot of this is not particularly liked among the node sheet plugin that we use so if it, it kind of has a hard time detecting whether you're cheating or whether you're just using runecraft if at any point you get kicked for using one of the uh, the runes or one of the runes seem to be working in a very bad mo in a very bad way uh, please report it to an admin a moderator or a trial moderator, and or make a uh, make a a, uh, a ticket. We'll get right at you. This is um, there are some fatal runes in this, and we've disabled most of them. We've uh, we've made sure that most that can uh, grieve in a high high in a um, how do you say it in a very bi in a very high manner things that can destroy a lot of things very quickly has been uh, removed we've also disabled the endurance rune if anyone should know runecraft from before the endurance rune practically made you invincible for quite a lot of time in fact uh, it could make you invincible f up to 10 minutes um, which I feel completely ruins a PvP as everyone can just run around with it we've tried to n have as many runes as possible enabled the uh, the runes we've allowed elites to have have been runes that we try to focus not being runes that would destroy PvP. If at any point a non-elite feels that an elite rune destroys PvP or that anyone feels a certain rune destroys PvP, uh, there has been a lot of uh, controversy with the uh, pyro pyrokinesis rune. And if at any point someone feels, oh, this pyrokinesis rune, or this spring rune, or this um, uh, this uh, bow of translocation rune, or anything else ruins uh, PvP because they can just fly around, they can just fly into people's spaces, and they can just descend into people's underground houses, will uh, take the matter up and then find a um, solution for it because this is a public server and we're all in it together I got a lot of messages saying oh we should get runecraft back oh runecraft would be good and a lot of new players saying oh I've heard a lot about runecraft and it sounds pretty interesting so uh, we put it on and now it's a test and hopefully um, you're going to like it if not well so much that uh, good luck out there this is the uh, staff team from Brickcraft out and I'll see you in the next video.